well as we've got microphones in the room, we will pass them around as a reminder for those in the room. Please identify yourselves and the agencies that you're with, and we will get started. So first question from the room. Bob Holliday, our good friend to your left, Olamide, will take the question. Pronounce your first name for me. Olamide. Olamide. Bob Holliday, WL.com Olamide. With Kurt Van Kurt having graduated, you have a new quarterback. How important is it for you to be even more of a playmaker running and catching the football to take some pressure off this guy? Um, it's, it's important for me because I've, I've been in the system for two years now. And uh, just to make the transition easy for our new quarterback, Bryce, um, just to make plays any way I can, whether it be in the backfield or out of receiver or inside receiver at slot. So I have a lot on my shoulders, and I'm ready to take that load. Alameda, right here to my left, first row. Dan Tortora, Wake Up Call, DT.com. Alameda, just what you could say about Bryce. I know you brought up Bryce Perkins, your new quarterback. How much is, is this offense kind of more – is it more exciting for you? How different is it knowing that he's a different style of quarterback and he provides that dual threat for you? Uh, it's different for me because it, um, it forces the defense to play a lot more man to stop the, you know, the option that the, that the quarterback has to run the ball. So uh, it's just a lot of one-on-ones for me, and I, it gives me a lot more out of opportunities out of receiver. Olamide, to your left, second row. Uh, Doug Dowdy from the Run-Up Times. Talk about your – how your role has evolved over your career. Did you come in as the kind of all-purpose guy you are now? Uh, sort of, but not really. Um, came in as a running back, switched to receiver my first year, and then um, just evolved into more of a, a guy that can do it all. Um, I have background in running back, background in receiver, and uh, it's just really, it's just gotten to the point where I need to develop both as far as a running back and a receiver. And uh, also the leadership um, throughout the years. I've kind of been a quiet guy, but this year especially, I have to be more vocal because the team needs me to talk and be able to uh, uplift and motivate my teammates. Alameda, just over my right shoulder in the white shirt. Alameda, Paul Woody from the Times Dispatch in Richmond. Uh, it's difficult to argue with the numbers you put up last year. What do you think you need to do, or what? how do you improve on those numbers? Uh, do you want to do more big plays, be more explosive, that type of thing? So that's, uh, that's something I looked at right after the season ended with uh, our wide receiver coach, Coach Higgins. Um, what could I do to get better? And um, one thing that we really emphasized was yards after the catch. Uh, I, can, I can improve on that. And um, not taking any catch for granted, I had a lot of drops last year, a lot of missed opportunities to even have a bigger, better season. So really just taking advantage of every opportunity that I have. All right, Alameda, we're going to go to the cameras. Second row, he's got his hand up in the air. Alameda, Andrew McClung from WFXR. Last year, some would call it your breakout season. You made the second team all ACC. Going into your senior season, what are just some of your big goals for this year? Um, personally, um, I want to be first team all ACC and uh, an All-American. And I feel like I've been putting in the work to do that. And uh, as a team, we have our, our goals to beat Virginia Tech and to uh, not only go to a bowl game this year, but win one as well. Lamade right here on the aisle. Frank Maloney, Who's Talking, uh, Fox Sports 910. Uh, last season you had a huge game against Boise State. What was different about that game? You, you set some NCAA records, some school records, and certainly career records in that game. And carrying that forward, how does that help you for this season? Um, just knowing what I'm capable of doing and um, just being consistent and always playing at that level, no matter what adversity, whether it be internal or external, um, just always being able to perform at a very high level because my teammates need that. Alameda, right back here. Alameda, just what you can say about life under Bronco Mendenhall, what he's been to this team. You've obviously seen this team go through some strife and some adversity all the way to get to six wins in a bowl game last year. Just what he's done to change the culture, change the climate for you in Virginia? Um, really just, I mean, when he first got here, he just got, got rid of a lot of people just by holding the standard up really high. And uh, other people just couldn't uphold that standard or they just chose not to. So uh, just getting rid of those people were, was huge for us because now we know who's really in it and who really wants to work. And uh, I'm just building upon that and uh, just trying to do better and uh, get better each day. Lamade, from right here at the podium, last year you win five of your first six games and then drop seven, six of your last seven. How do you process that over the offseason? 
So um, one thing I was really thinking about um, was just uh, through adversity or accomplishment, we have to be the same. We can't be uh, just because we're doing well. We're five and one. At one point, we can't we can't let off the the brakes or the the gas. Um, we have to keep pushing and keep striving to, to find a ways to get better. And uh, I feel like when we got to that point in the year, we were, we got complacent, and uh, you could see it in our play, uh, especially the the following week against uh, Boston College. So, just through accomplishment and adversity, we need to push through and still hold ourselves to a high standard. So we're getting ready to uh, bring up your teammate, Chris Peace. What is it like practicing against the defense that he's on? Uh, it prepares you for every, every circumstance. Um, you know, the defense does a lot of different things and uh, give us, gives us a lot of different looks. And um, when we're in a game, it's like it's kind of simplified. And it's like, OK, we've seen we, we go against a defense that's way more complex or something or a defense that's very aggressive. And uh, it just prepares us for the game, and uh, it's, it's really helpful. Outstanding. So we'll switch places. Chris, if you want to come on up. And we'll get Chris situated at the podium, and Chris will go to your right here in the second row. Bob Holiday, WRL.com. Chris, you only lost three players, uh, eight guys returned, and, and you have a lot more depth now. But yet, yet the guys that you replaced, uh, have to replace, are among the greatest in Virginia history, a couple of them. How do you replace their presence? Um, those three guys, uh, they're pretty good players. Um, they taught a lot. Uh, we definitely grown off them. Uh, but now it's a matter of everybody stepping in now. You know, uh, guys like Joey Blunt, Brenton Nelson, Chris Moore back there along with Juan, those guys just pick it up, pick off where he left off at when I mean, I mean uh, Quinn. Micah, uh, me, J-Mac, we have to step in, fill in a bigger role this year. And then guys on the D-line, Mandy, Bernie, Eli, all just have to step in one more notch. Chris, to your left, second row. Doug Daddy from the Roanoke Times. When you were invited to, to come to this affair, uh, what did it mean to you? You know, you haven't really, you've kind of been in the shadows at times. It, does it signal anything to you for, as far as leadership? Um, yeah, you could say that. Um, just a bigger leadership role this year, and um, just an honor. Coach Menhall and the university picked me to uh, come and represent the school this year. It's to your right, third row. Hey, Chris. Adam Powell, Blue Mac Publishing. You guys kind of took that first step last year, got to a bowl game, and kind of found some success. What's it going to take to kind of go to that next level, compete for an AC Coastal, and you know, go even farther? Uh, just pick up on all cylinders this year. Uh, we all have to get stronger, bigger, faster again this year. Uh, you know, a big goal this year, not only to return, we have to actually win the bowl game now. Chris, last year you led the linebackers for the ACC with the most sacks, 7.5. What is it about you that allows you to be that explosive? Uh, I think the play calling definitely helps. Uh, Coach Menhall is pretty aggressive with the play calling. That allows me to actually get more chances to go after the quarterback. Um, so that's a big credit to the play calling and the guys around me, uh, the D-line. They help make pressures, help the quarterback step up into me. So it all just clicks together. And not that you're not excited during the course of the game, but when the play comes in, and you hear that it's really focusing on your side of the ball. Does that amp you up even further for that one play? Uh, yeah, gets you a little bit, just a little bit more pumped, uh, a little bit more edge on you. Other questions for Chris? Chris, we're going to go to the very back of the room, camera stand. He's got his hand up in the air. <laughs> Chris, Preston Willett with uh, CBS 19 out of Charlottesville. Y'all kind of coined the phrase new standard last year, but how do y'all kind of improve on that? Is it a changing standard every season? Uh, I wouldn't say complete change. Just uh, pick up where we left off last year. I know one thing. I, one thing that's really been emphasized this year is the bowl game and beating Tech. And uh, part of the new standard is to now we have to beat Virginia Tech to make that next jump forward in our program, and along with returning to postseason play and winning as well. Chris, to my left, right here. Chris. How have you seen this team yourself? I asked Alameda about it with Bronco Mendenhall. How has this team evolved and changed for you for the better? Uh, I would say everyone's completely bought in. I would say this year is this year and last year, I've never seen so many guys bought in 
Uh, when I first came here, it was just a lot of half and half here, half and half there, and just a lot of people dragging their feet. Uh, I don't think anybody on this team is holding uh, anyone back or this program. Stay on the left, second row. Chris, I wanted to ask you about Alamide uh, and his skill set. When, for example, you're scrimmaging one against ones, how hard is it for you guys to get off the field when he's out there darting through holes, um, you know, catching the ball in the backfield and extending plays? Uh, he's really explosive. Uh, you know, when he's on the field, you have to be aware of where he is, where he lines up at. And um, I'm just taking, for example, whenever you're covering him, make sure you get 10 yards back. Uh, he's pretty fast. Chris, this is your fourth year. This is Coach Mendenhall's third year. What has he taught you? And what do you think you've taught him? I think Coach Mendenhall has taught me to be a better man um, all aside from football. Uh, he's definitely developed my character a lot further. And uh, of course, football added on, he's uh, definitely made me a better player. And uh, definitely started working harder because of him. Uh, as far as what I've taught him, I'm not really sure. Hopefully, uh, hopefully he's learned. I just come to work every day. You know, I don't expect anything. Just head down, grind hard. It's an on-the-spot question, and you've pushed yeah. through that pretty well. So thanks for doing that. Anything else for our student athletes? If not, we'll excuse the two of you guys. Thanks a lot. We'll bring Coach Mendenhall to the podium. Oh, no, they can take off. They've got another stop to go to, I believe. So, Coach, we'll start with our first question right here to my left in the first row with Dan. Yeah, be before that, I'd like to say what Chris has taught me. Please. Um, Chris has taught me uh, the power of work ethic and example. Uh, I would consider Chris Peace um, one of the best uh, practice players in terms of day in and day out work. Um, that I've seen and been lucky enough to coach. And it, it's inspiring. Uh, I never have to wonder. He just, he works and he works and he works. And as you can tell, he, he doesn't want to say a lot. Uh, and I appreciate that. We have a, a, a saying, a guiding principle in our program, less drama, more work. He, he is that. And um, I'm, I'm lucky to be at Virginia at this time with him. Um, and he's been a huge part of providing a tangible example for me to point to to the team and say, this is what we're looking for. Right here to my left. Bronco, I, I wanted to go off of that with Chris and Alameda, oh. but the team as a whole, what you've done for them, they answered that here this morning and, and they've answered the last couple of years. Outside of Chris in general, what has Virginia done for you? I, I appreciate the question. Uh, I'm lucky to be at Virginia. My wife and I talk about that all the time. Uh, I, I like the chance um, to make a difference. And that to make a difference, it only happens if you're allowed to make a difference. And the players have given me that opportunity where they have taken myself and my staff at face value, have allowed their trust to be placed in me. I can feel that. And, and that's a huge responsibility. And so to be trusted and relied on, um, has, has been a powerful gift that they've given me, and I want more than anything for them to, to have success. Uh, I remember the locker room after Georgia Tech. <laughs> it was one of, the, one of the most wild celebrations I've ever seen in my life, and uh, that mattered to me. It was gratifying, not enough um, in relation to what we want to accomplish, but it was a fun payback for me to see them that excited and I want more of that for them and that they're allowing me to coach them because it does take that that they're allowing me to coach them um, I'm appreciative of and so I think just in general what they've given me is this this clarity that actually uh, people want to improve they want to be better they want to be led and they want to be um, dealt with honestly and openly and um, so it's validated some of the, the beliefs that I had um, with just a, a brand new group of young people Coach, the camera stands very back, second yeah. row. Coach, Angel McClung, WFXR. Your first game ever as a UVA football coach, y'all played Richmond. Richmond beat y'all 37 to 20. This season, y'all open up against Richmond. Does this game have a little special meaning to you? I, I think it has special meaning um, more in relation to it being year three rather than the same opponent. Um, 
interesting because it's year three in our program or in my tenure at UVA, but in some senses it's almost year one as we think about a new starting quarterback and now playing football without Micah and Quinn. Um, and so there's kind of year, year three expectations with some year one reference points. Um, but I like the challenge and I like the opportunity um, and I like the expectations that our team has. And so I can't say that, it will, uh, that you can measure year one against year three because a common opponent because so much has changed, but I think it would be fair for some people to do that just by the nature of it being the same opponent. Your next two questions will come here on the edge of the aisle, first in the green shirt, then in the white shirt. Hi, Bronco. Aaron hey. McFarling with the Roanoke Times. Uh, you heard Chris say one of the goals that he has is to beat Virginia yeah. Tech. Uh, I think that's an obvious goal, but maybe it wouldn't be spoken until November. Uh, I mean, is that something that you emphasize that that's one of the things you really have to do to sort of uh, clear that next hurdle? It, it, it's clear, and so clarity has come over time in my tenure at UVA, right? So I came um, not knowing much about UVA, some about the history, some about the expectations, and some about the rivalry. But now that I've been at UVA for two years, it's becoming clearer what has to happen for the program to advance. And there will be benchmarks along the way that if certain benchmarks are met, momentum will be added, which means the acceleration of the program will happen um, at a faster rate and maybe more to, at a more meaningful level. And certainly when you have a rivalry game that you haven't won in a significant amount of time, that's one of the things that has to happen, regardless of where you are. And so we're open about it, um, more so now than I've ever been, just because it's more clear that that has to happen for University of Virginia's football program. And I want that to happen for our players. So um, it's not a secret. Um, we are open about it. Uh, we are focusing on that as we need to, as well as the expectation of we we expect to play postseason every year, not just occasionally, and we expect to win. And so that's part of the new standard that Chris talks about is those are expectations. Those aren't things that we expect um, randomly or occasionally. We want a program that does those things consistently, and that's part of the direction we're moving toward. Still work to do, no question, um, but that's the direction we're moving. Uh, Paul Woody, Richmond Times Dispatch. Bronco, um, Alameda set a single season record last year with receptions at 85. Uh, he, he averaged 10.5 yards per reception. Is it important to your offense for him to increase that yards per catch average? He, he's going to have to. Um, so as strong as his numbers were a year ago, they're going to have to be better uh, for our team to have success. And the good news was from what I saw in the spring, I thought his spring was um, the best of any player on our team. And, and I think his preparation to this point in the offseason has continued on that, but he has to be a workhorse. And knowing, as we've all seen him play, he's a dynamic player. So it can't just be number of touches. It has to be the yards that happen with each touch. That has to happen for our team. So I think he's training for it. And what you also heard him mention is the team needs him to lead and the team needs him to be more vocal so not only is he going to have to improve his own performance which was strong a year ago he's going to also have to for our team to have success he's going to also have to take on the next component of caring for other people as well right which is more of a responsibility it takes more energy and time and he's doing that and he's learning how to do that the bottom line is he's going to have to do that for us to have success second row here with frank Coach, uh, Frank Maloney, who's talking, Fox Sports 910. Um, I'm wondering, um, how has the transition to the new athletic director, mm. Carla Williams, impacted your football program? Man, I'm lucky that Carla is with us. Uh, what I was hopeful for when a change in athletic director was being made, what I was hopeful for is, and what I asked for, is someone that had a coaching background that was an amazing person who knew what exceptional college football looked like. And we got all three. We got a former coach who also knows what exceptional football looks like, who's an amazing person. Um, Carla asks questions first, probing questions. She listens intently before she acts, but when she acts, she acts decisively. And she believes that the athletic department cannot reach its full potential without a healthy football program. 
Um, I believe the same, not for the sake of football, but for the sake of the whole athletic department. And, and I think for Charlottesville and the Commonwealth in general, it'd be cool to have another great program just for people to support and, and get behind. Um, and Carla, after asking probing questions, to her credit, has delivered on everything that I've asked for and supported. Uh, and she supported those initiatives in terms of building an infrastructure that will actually allow us to at least get to industry standard um, before we show what we can do on the field. And I'm grateful. Um, and more than anything, I'd love for the results to reflect that in terms of payback um, to her for the support that she's given us to this point, even though it's early in the process. Coach to your right, third row. Hey, Coach. Adam Powell, one Mike Polishing. You lost Quinn Blanding in the secondary, but there's still some playmakers in that group, Thornhill and uh, Britton Nelson. You just talk about that group yeah. getting beyond uh, Quinn Blanding. So our secondary a year ago uh, led the ACC in pass defense, um, which is part of um, defense. Uh, Quinn was our best tackler of that group. And so we have a unique set of players that um, we can put in a variety of combinations right now. And I'm still kind of moving and, and seeing where that might fit. But um, there's a great chance that Juan Thornhill will replace Quinn, meaning that he'll be in that position. And then between Brenton Nelson and Joey Blunt, you've got another nice set of safeties there. Um, and then when you consider Tim Harris coming back, with also Bryce at the other corner, um, not even to mention Chris Moore, there's a potential that that, air, or that unit could again be a really strong unit for us. Um, as long as we address the tackling totals um, that Quinn had. And so I like the potential and it's one of the few positions currently on our team where I see not only the quality of player, but depth and that's that, as we're talking about that position, that's more like what I would like the majority of our positions to look like. Um, so it's a good point of reference for us. Bob Holliday, WRL.com. Coach, from the cheap seats, it would appear that you made a very large move when you came to Virginia, leaving a program that was very, very successful, among the nation's best for decades, uh, to take over a program that had been less successful, and you came to an entirely different part of the country and a new conference. Now, as you begin year three, what's this like for you? What, what, what's been the biggest challenge or challenges? Yeah, I, I think you'd have to say challenges. Um, but to be clear, that's exactly what I was looking for. So I was intentional and I wanted challenge and I wanted change and I wanted growth. And certainly we got all those things. Inviting 14 staff members to come with me, we basically did Lewis and Clark backwards and, and came across the country it's been a galvanizing experience. I've learned and grown more maybe in the last two and a half years in working with Virginia than I have over my career. Uh, and I want desperately for the program, but more importantly for the people to have success. Um, I've become friends with a lot of new people. I've become captured by the type of young people that come to UVA and I'm driven to see this um, to fruition, meaning consistent and successful football year after year at UVA. And um, after year one, there was an entire recalibration that had to happen from where I thought the program was and where it really was. I was significantly off. After the recalibration of year one, that got us to some success in year two, right? We're back to postseason. There's still another recalibration that's just happened after then playing in our bowl game and seeing our current level of preparation for what that looks like. And so now after a second recalibration, and this might happen multiple more times, it gives us a better chance for year three. But I love the challenge. I love the um, kind of the um, all-encompassing nature of what that requires, as is my family and, and all the coaches that came. This is, um, it is galvanizing to take on something difficult. Um, but that's what, um, that's what I love. I love challenging things, and that's certainly what we have. But I love to see um, complete effort and commitment in pursuit of something like that. And the team is starting to do that. They're starting to realize this is worth it. And that's gratifying. Coach, back to your left, second row with Doug. Doug Dowdy, run up times. What is Bryce Perkins' potential, and where is his leadership level right now? Yeah, that's a great question. His leadership level. I'll start in reverse order. Bryce's leadership level 
Um, what I've most appreciated is he came in not, not being the guy, but wanting to be part of the team and do everything possible to show that he was willing to follow rules, um, to possibly um, to be in the background and let his actions talk before his words. And then over time, as his actions and his work ethic showed, um, and as, as the team started to identify this is going to be our quarterback, then he appropriately, in kind of reflecting maturity, started to then lead uh, in a more visible way. And he's going to have to, even though he'll be our starting quarterback for the first time, he's going to, what the requirement will be is it will, for us to succeed, it will have to be as if he's been our starter longer than that. Um, and he knows that, and so, but I think his work ethic will allow that. And then we have to design the system and the play calling in a manner that gives him his best chance to do what he does well to reflect consistency. Um, what was the first part of the question? I'm sorry. Oh, his potential. Wow. Um, he's one of the strongest and fastest and best athletes that I've coached. And so there, there isn't a play where when, if he's running with the football that can't go all the way. Um, he can uh, throw the ball effectively, and I think he's a solid decision maker. And so to me, if point number three, if the decision making maturity increases at a faster rate or um, an accelerated rate, but there could be pretty remarkable things happen in his tenure at UVA. But I think that will control it, not the physical skills. I think the leadership and playing ACC football and the decision making at that position that will, I think, determine his potential um, or the result. Coach, to keep us on the clock, both the question and the answer, we'll see if we can press through it. In the back with the camera? Yep. Hi, Coach. Uh, hey. Dave Walls from WSET in Lynchburg. Uh, you talked earlier about the rivalry of Virginia Tech, but you have a new rival that you'll be playing for the first time this year just down the road in Liberty. Yes. Uh, not often a new FBS team just sprouts up near your own backyard. Just touching that rivalry or – what could be a rivalry uh, so close distance-wise in there, you've already got a fan base. And what does that kind of close in-state rivalry do to perhaps uh, convincing in-state recruits to come to Charlottesville? Well, I, I like the, first of all, the scheduling philosophy is pretty simple. Um, four, we have four uh, non-conference games per year, one of which has to be a Power 5 opponent. But the other three, I love the idea of intriguing and regional. Right, and, and that's both, right? So Liberty is intriguing, right? Because they're, they're on a brand new path in, in Division I and, and an independent, which I've traveled that road at Brigham Young. They're right down the road. And so there's interest, immediately an intrigue, and it makes complete sense. Um, so when you consider teams like that, besides uh, the FCS opponents in our state, besides Old Dominion, I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of options that make a lot of sense um, and I think it's good for the state, and I think it's good for um, the players in state. So I, I think it's, uh, it fits exactly within a scheduling philosophy that I have for the program at this time, and I think it's uh, good for the players also. So I'm looking forward to the game. Folks, well done. We finished right on time. Virginia, okay. good luck this year. Thank you.